Welcome everybody, I am Jesse Bartman and this is Bartman's Bits. So now that I've made a few videos and I'm getting comfortable in front of the lens, I is so dry. It's time to take it to the next level and add some movement. This is where a slider can make all the difference, but unless you're willing to shell out a few hundred bucks, you're kind of stuck. So a while back I picked up this guy, the newer, new, newer, non-motorized slider for this many dollars and it has been great for doing like product shots or you know when you're filming something other than yourself because obviously you can sit behind the camera and move it but if i want to get that movement for me i have to have somebody else doing it and it's just me okay so i have some stepper motors laying around from projects that didn't really work out and some bearings, some pulleys. I also have this GT2 timing belt, belt, cable, whatever it is. Anyway, I've got enough of it so I can take this non-motorized slider and make it motorized. The only problem is I need some 3D printed parts, but of course I have a 3D printer sitting right over there. Why don't I just use that? And that brings me to the whole point of this video. I broke my printer. So let me give you some background on this. Now I was having some pretty terrible prints on that thing a while back. So parts of my first layer would be perfect and then on the other side of the printing bed, it would be thin. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that the bed's not level. Well, that might be the case if you're using a manually leveled bed where you screw the bottom to make it level, right? But I'm not, I'm using a BL Touch. Now the BL Touch will only do so good if you have a horribly unlevel bed but i feel like i set it up properly and got it pretty close and then started using the bl touch so that shouldn't have been an issue but i figured why not manually level it anyway just to see so on my next print those thin and thick spots switched around they weren't consistent now i'm no 3d printing wizard but i do know how to level a bed so something else had to be wrong. That led me to believe that there was something wrong with the hot end leading to these inconsistent prints. Now, if you're not familiar with how the hot end works, let's bring that picture up for you. The heat break is what helps create a specific zone in which the filament melts below and travels to the nozzle and stays cool above to avoid heat creep up into the Bowden tube. If the Bowden tube isn't seated properly, it can allow that heat creep to melt the filament before it reaches the nozzle, leading to inconsistent flow and inconsistent prints. So once I took out that Bowden tube, I could see that there was a PLA goop fest that was happening inside that hot end. So I wanted to disassemble the entire hot end, that way I could clean it out thoroughly, reassemble it, and get back to printing. And sure enough, when I was trying to disassemble it, I broke it. Well, I didn't really break it, because if I had a Lowe's or a Home Depot around, I'd be able to get the necessary tools that I needed to get the Allen key that I broke off inside there out. Unfortunately, the only place to really get tools around here is Ace Hardware. And it's not quite the Ace Hardware that you're used to. Yeah, that's a topic for another video. So I went ahead and ordered an entire replacement head from Micro Swiss. And while I was at it, got their direct drive kit as well. So according to their website, this should be a drop-in replacement for the Ender 3 Pro. Let's go ahead and take a look at just how easy it was. Now this video is gonna be a little condensed and it's more just showing kind of the basic overall installation. If you want a highly detailed instruction set or instructional video, just head over to the Micro Swiss website and look up whatever printer you have. They have the installation instructions on there and they are very thorough. So this is more just for fun. Hope you guys enjoy. First up, Allen keys, hex wrenches, Allen wrenches, whatever you want to call them, you're going to need quite a few of them. Maybe not that many, but let's call out exactly what you need. A Phillips screwdriver, a seven millimeter socket, an adjustable wrench, a seven millimeter wrench, which is included, 1.5 millimeter hex, and a two, 2.5, and three millimeter hex. So, roll the tape.
One potentially dangerous thing that I did find was if you have that all metal extruder kit from Creality that you've installed as an upgrade, when you're removing that to take the stepper motor out to put it where it belongs for the direct drive unit, the spring that holds that lever can pop right out like it did for me. So go ahead and put your thumb on there as you're taking it out. Now's a pretty good time to mention the importance of having organization when you're doing a project like this. And what I find comes in most handy is having a magnetic tray, like the one here. You can find that linked in the description below. Back to it. You can check out this fan cover in the description below. It really helps with the airflow and makes that fan silent. I mean, let's put it right up next to it. Compared to this one. Much better. And now it's off to printing. Like I said, this is one of the easiest upgrades that I've had for this printer. Uh, the fit and finish was great and the instructions made it very easy to put this together. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna go ahead and get printing. Hello there, welcome to the end of the video. Now that I've got you here, why don't you take some time to scroll down and peruse the description below. Down there, you will find links to all the products that I mentioned in this video, as well as some of these. Now I have to mention that those links are affiliated and a small portion of those sales comes back to support this channel and future projects. Now growing the Bartman's Bits community is important to me. So when you're done clicking on those links, come on back and click subscribe 
and also don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified of any future videos that I release. Now if you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see me make, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And thank you for watching.